بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله لا أبغي به بدلا حمدا يبلغ من رضوانه الأمل ثم الصلاة على خير الورى وعلى ساداتنا آله وصحبه الفضلاء We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his blessed family all of the companions and those who follow them until the end of time Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the second in a series that I'm putting together on discussions and ideas, not final thoughts by any means, on what an Islamic political theology would look like within the context of North America. For those of you outside of North America, feel free to chime in and add your own thoughts and feel free to differ. But again, I, I need us all to appreciate that the context here is largely within the context of North America. <clears throat> the first in this series, I said something that I received a few emails and phone calls from, which I was happy actually to achieve because that means people are actually listening. And that was when I said that we have to appreciate that voting for Joseph Biden is sinful behavior. People immediately understood that I was saying that I did not welcome a Biden victory. Uh, I, I certainly am much more happy with Biden than Trump, but at the same time, I am tremendously trepidatious around any of the kind of establishment politicians and what that means for Muslims and what that means for the people who are, as Sayyidah Khadija said about the Prophet, the Ma'doom, those who are often forgotten. But I said that and I, I was expecting that reaction. But then when I would explain to people, listen, none of these people are perfect and none of these people are beyond sin and none of these people are going to be prophetic in their actions. They don't have isma. And then people said to me, you know, we never thought about it that way before. And what I, what I was trying to accomplish is to change the lenses of Islamic activism and Islamic political theology from that of sheer efficacy and power, right? We can achieve power through evil. And efficacy at a political level is not always the outcome of righteous actions. So I wanted to shift the narrative from efficacy and nearness to power to one of sin and obedience evil and good. And I believe that when we do that, it allows us to have very serious conversations and craft language that protects us from complete political rejection, right? No politics in Islam. Two, let's just jump in head first without any concern for qala Allah and qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, I want to share with you a simple yet powerful idea that is going to contribute to our understanding, hopefully, of Islamic political theology, and that is how we see the universe as Muslims. We know that over and over in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي ardi آيَاتُ لِلْمُقِينِينَ That in the earth there are signs for you. We see in Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of Al-Alameen. Al-Alameen is called Mulhaq bi Mudhakkir Salim. It is not a pure, what's called Mudhakkir Salim means a pure male or human plural. It is actually considered Ghayr al-Aqil, right? Al-Alameen generally, taghliban, is considered everything, right? Except God and, and most things besides God, uh, uh, all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala largely does not have intellect. However, it's given the form of an intellect to help us think about the world. And this is something that speaks to um, being an ally to the environment, right? Environmental allyship, being uh, shepherds of environmentalism within a religious framework. Everything around us is alam ala wujudillah. Everything is a sign of God, subhanAllah. But within that, we have to appreciate the underlying theological principles about how Muslims look at the universe, look at the heavens and the earth. And this is mentioned by a Sheikh Ahmed Dardir in a very important book called Al Kharida. I teach it at my school, Swiss. Uh, this is a foundational book in Aqidah within mainstream Islam, within many mainstream Sunni theological uh, seminaries, universities, and madrasas. And he says, Wa'alam, 
He says, ثم أعلم بأن هذا العالم He says, you have to know ثم أعلم بأن هذا العالم أي ما سوى الله العلي العالم He says, you have to understand and know that العالم and what is alam? He says, ما سوى الله everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala العلي العالم the transcendent all-knowing بغير شق حادث مفتقر And these are the two words that I want you to think about quickly is hadith and muftaqir. Hadith is something that has a beginning and an ending. We say that the universe in general is what's called al-hawadithin. Everything in creation are those things that have a beginning, a starting point, and an ending. Later on in the poem he says حدوثه وجوده بعد العدم Right? He said that the proof that something is hadith, is temporal, is that it didn't exist, and now it exists. We find this in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem, huwa alladhi ansha'akum. Allah is the one who ansha'akum, brought you out stage by stage. You came from nothing. وَجَعَالَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبَصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ And provided you hearing and seeing and emotions. But few, very few of you are going to be thankful of that. The Quran says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Directing us to this idea of change, existence, and non-existence, which is called hudūth, is this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, how could you disbelieve in Allah? and you were dead, and he brought you to life, then you will die, and then you will be resurrected and return to him. This is called huduth. We believe that everything in creation is hadith, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, huwa al-awwalu wal akhiru. Allah is the one who has no beginning and no ending. So that's the first word that I need us to understand as we engage in a political theology, religious political the theology, is that everything in this dunya is temporary, except Allah. Everything will perish except Allah. Everything will, 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 whatever is with Allah will last, right? Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the everlasting. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other word that he uses is بِغَيْرِ shaqin. Harithun muftaqir. Muftaqir means reliant, impoverished. It is not able to be self-established. Human beings, we exist because of so many other things. We are not self-subsisting. That's why one of the foundational beliefs in Sifat al-Ma'ani is that Allah is qa'im bi nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is self-established. Yaqum bi nafsi. In Arabic, it's very clear. This is ba ba sababiyya. And, 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 and this is the root and foundation of Islamic theology. Now, applying that usul to political theology is what I'm, I'm trying to do. And by no means am I an expert on politics. So my hope is that activists and political theorists within the Muslim community will engage and develop this further and critique and offer uh, um, some ideas as well as, mashallah, our mashaykh al-kibar and others. But Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuha nas antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. O oh, humanity, you are impoverished to God. You are a need. Ana la aqumu bi nafsi. I'm not able to establish myself. Aqumu bi oxygen. I'm able to be living with oxygen, with 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 mi'ah, with water. Bil akhirin. Other people have helped me to live my life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa al-wahid, al-wahdaniya subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one yaqoom bi nafsihi. He's self-subsisting. He needs nothing. Huwa yuta'imu wa la yuta'am. The Quran says he provides and he doesn't need provisions. In Surah Al-Ikhlas, Allahu al-samad, al-samadiyya. That's the best word that encapsulates this idea. So we are muftaqir to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah is ghaniyun hamid. So we understand now two very important principles, two important words 
al hawadith from the word hadith, because when I talk to you, my speech has a beginning and an end. That's why it's called hadith. An accident is called, is called haditha, because laha bidaya wa nihaya. It has a beginning and an ending. So everything is temporary except Allah, and everything is in need except of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is going to form the foundations and the bedrock of how we think about helping others, how we align to address injustice, how we look after things like economic inequality, social stratification, bigotry and racism. All this is going to now come out and permeate theologically from the bedrock of temporality and impoverishment, subhanAllah. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of you are those who understand that all, in some, Al-Hattab Al-Maliki said, this is one of the last hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he said that all creation are reliant on Allah. And the best of you, as related by Bukhari, are those who look after those who are reliant upon him. But that's going to come later. Sheikh Dardir, Alhamdulillah, I was able to read this to the Mashaykh, Alhamdulillah. And, and there's something important I'll say as we finish. He continues, and this is the foundation uh, really that I want to get to. In the line he says, بِغَيْرِ شَقٍ حَادِثٌ مُفْتَقِرُ لِأَنَّهُ قَامَ بِهِ تَغَيُّرُ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the next part of the poem says, after it says that you know, creation is temporary and it's, it's in need, it's impoverished, it's not self-subsisting, because Allah created it to taghayyur. Remember this word, taghayyur. It is in a state of flux. You know, ghayru maghdubi, other than. So this word is very, from, from the same root, taghayyur, it's, it's always in an other, it's always in flux. لِأَنَّهُ قَامَ بِهِ تَغَيُّرُ Because Allah has created the temporary world to always be in flux. And that's going to take us to our discussion next week. If something is in flux, it needs management. And if something is in flux, then that apply, implies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it free will. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it free will, that means that it has choices. And sometimes it makes good choices. And sometimes it will make bad choices. The Quran says, we showed people they're going to be thankful or ungrateful. How do then we manage that تغير as human beings? There is a flux which is out of our control. The gray hairs on my beard. I cannot pull a Rudy Giuliani, right? The gray hairs on my beard are beyond my control. But how I treat people, how I treat my neighbor, how I treat my family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me a limited freedom, al-kasb, although it does not escape his power or his will to make a choice. Inshallah, next week we're going to talk about that, the idea of how do we manage the world and how do we understand our role in the world. And how do we respond to the claim of some, unfortunately, of our mashaykh? And, and some of them are in my theological school who are saying that we should just accept evil. We should just accept bad leaders. We should just accept the somber, morbid world around us and surrender to the will of Allah. Why does that run counter to the foundations, in particular, of the Asha'ira and the Maturidiyya but as well as the Salafiyyah and their understanding of Aqeedah. Next week, inshallah, we're going to talk about theodicy. Why do things happen? And what Islam commands us to do when we understand that everything around us is in flux. I leave you with this again. If everything is in flux, then there is a part of that flux which is we have no control over. The gray hairs on my beard, for example, aging, illness, COVID-19, these are things beyond our ability. But then at a micro level, we have been given the opportunity to engage certain things that are in flux. How do we mitigate, for example, the spread of COVID-19? I can eat healthy to deal with aging. How do I treat others? So the first we say is from the irada, kawniya, right? This is a, a, a irada that Allah has 
shown us his will in ways that are immutable and non-negotiable, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second type of changes are those where Allah has given us the amana, the responsibility to navigate and in fact rule those changes in ways that lead to the establishment of justice in caring for others. So what did we talk about today? A number of very important principles. Number one is, we say, that everything except Allah is temporal and in a constant need of something because Allah has created it to change. Allah says you're heading back to Allah. Where are you going? So the first week, alhamdulillah, I started to discuss the framing of Islamic political theology between sin and obedience. And that is the language that we should be using when we're engaging activism and, 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 and politics. And I noted that oftentimes that can get blurred and there is language for engaging sin. And in fact, there is language for, say, supporting uh, someone who may have evil and may have good. Sheikh Izzi Adin Abdul Salam, he mentioned this in great detail in his book on the foundations of Islamic law. This week, I began to talk about how Islam, it's from a theological perspective, I'm reading from a theological text, looks at the world as though, number one, it's temporary. Number two, it is impoverished. And number three, that it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it to be in a constant flux. And some of that flux is out of our control, right? Like, for example, the sun and the moon, our, our aging and so on. And some of that flux, Allah has given us a cusp, a choice to choose how to act. And it is within that framework of choice that we begin to think about Islamic political theology. Barakallahu fikum, may Allah bless you and increase you, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help give us basira. And if you disagree with people in the comments, or you know, there's no need to fight, alhamdulillah, we can choose to discuss these things in a way which is reasonable uh, without throwing accusations and so on and so forth. I will leave you with this to think about for the next week. Go look at the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to tell us the story about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. Alam tara ila alladhi hajja Ibrahim fi qawmi. When he went and spoke to the leader of his people. In arguing with that person about his injustice and his failure to worship Allah alone, Sayyiduna Ibrahim uses the fact that he is opposing the true God whose will is immutable. That the taghayyur which Allah has imposed upon creation is a reminder to oppressors and evildoers that that's who you're opposing. Based on what I just said, think about that critically. And then continue to read the following verses. While Allah mentions the one who passes by a, 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 a abandoned town. And then the next verse where Sayyidina Ibrahim says, Arini kayfa tuhyul mawta. Show me how you cause life to death. Think about that within the context of today's discussion and see if you can extract any meanings in light of the terms that I introduced. Barakallahu feekum. We'll see you next week. We'll talk about the challenge of theodicy and how morbid times are not an excuse to give up on our ability to make right choices. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.